Hi everyone and welcome to Love in VR's weekly product update. Uh, I know that last time I told you that I will be working on our dating games, uh, but once again, and it's been a pattern during this project, performance caught up with me. Um, and since performance is such an important topic for VR, I've decided to make that the subject of this video. So in this video, I will explain why performance is such a big deal in VR and I will share with you a few tips and tricks of uh, what I've done in love in VR to improve performance. So first of all, let me explain why performance is such a big deal in VR. Uh, and for that, the key concept that you need to understand is F PS, uh, frames per second. You should be familiar with what frames per second uh, mean from the movie world. Everyone knows that the movie is 24 frames per second, 24 images per second. Uh, well, it's no different for VR. In, in VR, <coughs> you know, wherever you look in VR, uh, we need to display you a certain amount of uh, images per second. Uh, that's why the environment you're looking at moves in VR. There is a critical difference though between movies and uh, VR apps or any 3D games for that matter. It's that a movie knows in advance which images to display you. Uh, so when you download a movie, basically you download just a very large amount of uh, images that are then shown to you one after the other. Well, that's different in VR. Uh, a VR doesn't know in advance which images to show you. All of that is calculated in, in real time uh, because we cannot you know, predict everything you're going to look at in VR. The concept is that the more complex the calculations uh, made to calculate each image in real time, the longer it will take to calculate the image. So let's say that uh, in VR you're looking at something very complex like uh, you know, say a big tree, for instance, with many, many leaves, thousands of leaves. Each of those leaves might have, you know, a different color. The light might be bouncing on the leaf uh, in a different way. Well, that's very complex. Uh, it takes a lot of time to calculate. So maybe it will take half a second to uh, calculate the image of, of that tree. Uh, and if it takes half a second, then we can only display you two images per second and that means that your VR app uh, with that tree inside it is two frames per second, if that makes sense. So I hope you better understand the, the frame per second concept. I can already hear a lot of you say, so what? Uh, that's been the case uh, for video games for like 20 years. What's so different about VR? Well, there is one huge difference. Uh, it's that in VR, you need to display way more images per second, uh, frames per second, than in normal video games. In fact, about eight times more images per second than in normal video games. And um, the main reason for that is because if you are to display in VR the same amount of images per second uh, than in normal video games, um, well, as a user, you will immediately notice that something was weird and you will get sick and no one wants that. Like I just explained, uh, if you want to display more images uh, per second, then it means that you need to spend less time to calculate each image and uh, that means that you need to have less calculations per image, so roughly eight times less calculations per image than in normal video games. And then, of course, there is mobile VR, like the Gear VR right here, uh, and that's another challenge. Uh, as everyone knows, mobile phones are uh, way less powerful than PCs. Uh, my rule of thumb is that a mobile phone that works for VR, like the Samsung Galaxy S6, for instance, is roughly 10 times less powerful than a PC that works for VR. Uh, so what that means is that if you develop a VR app, uh, you not only need to make it do eight times less calculations per image than a normal PC video game, uh, but another 10 times uh, less calculation per image on top of that if you want it to work on mobile VR as well. Uh, so all in all, 80 times less calculation per image than a normal PC video game 
if you want your VR app to work for mobile too. Uh, so now that's very, very hard. You understand now why you need to you know, look at performance so intensely. Uh, so now let me share with you uh, what in my experience are the main factors that you need to look at in order to minimize the amount of um, calculation per image. Like you design a website mobile first, I've designed Love in VR mobile VR first. Uh, so everything I did, I first tested on mobile and uh, I optimized everything for mobile because if it works on mobile, it will work perfectly on, on PC. And it's been quite a challenge. Uh, I will give you my four biggest uh, performance wins. The first one is unlit shaders. Uh, so no light at all in your scene, uh, all unlit. Like that you have uh, no shadow calculation, no color calculation in real time. That's a massive performance boost. Uh, and the way you achieve that is that you need to uh, bake everything, bake all the light, uh, all the light information, shadow information into your uh, uh, textures. Let me show you uh, an example there if you look on my bookshelf for instance it looks like there are you know some spotlights but actually it's all baked uh, so if you look at the corresponding textures if you look there on the bottom left um, though my lights are there that they're baked into the the texture and, and so you need to do that for for your whole uh, scene basically and the second rule is uh, as few textures as possible uh, uh, you know showing a lot of textures uh, uh, is uh, extremely performance heavy uh, so you need to do something called uh, texture atlasing uh, meaning putting a lot of objects uh, onto the same texture so if i show you um, again everything that's on my bookshelf is on one texture uh, including the bookshelf itself so all the objects that you you see on the bookshelf uh, so the uh, the buddha the little uh, bonsai tree uh, my books and so on it's all shared on on one texture um, on the rule of thumb is you need to show maximum uh, 20 texture at a time wherever you, the uh, the user looks it's actually you know quite challenging because on mobile you cannot have textures that are larger than 248 pixels by 248 which is actually quite small uh, so you cannot put that many objects on one texture uh, so you need to make smart design choices basically you need to for instance make your environment quite uh, small so that you can easily divide it uh, in a small amount of 2048 by 2048 uh, textures. The third rule is uh, limit as much as possible the amount of expensive calculations that occur every frame, uh, like you know calculating movement, for instance. Uh, so for those who know Unity, uh, in my main scene, I only have one update function. Uh, that's it. Uh, that might be a bit extreme, but uh, that's the spirit, basically, uh, as few as possible. And finally, the last rule, uh, last but not the least, is uh, keep the amount of geometry to the absolute bare minimum. Uh, the goal is to have you know, less than 50,000 uh, vertices uh, per scene. Let me share with you uh, one thing I've done. Uh, so as a reminder, the way Love in VR works is that we uh, show a bungalow for each user that is uh, in the app with you. So if our app ever gets uh, really popular with thousands of uh, users at a time, uh, there is a potential to be thousands of, uh, of bungalows in the app. And each of my bungalows uh, is 2,000 vertices. So mm -hmm. if I were to display thousands of bungalows, well, uh, or even dozens of them, that will immediately be way above my 50,000 vertices threshold. So let me show you what I've uh, done. So here I am in Love in VR. You can see that my uh, bungalows are loaded. And by the way, have a look up there in the corner. I'm running at about uh, 
1,100 uh, frames per second, so good performance. And, you know, everything looks um, fairly normal, right? Uh, so it looks like I have uh, bungalows all the way to the horizon uh, over there. You know, nothing weird to report. Uh, now let me show you a bit behind the scenes. So I am there, that's the camera sign you see there is me. And indeed the four bungalows uh, immediately around me, the ones that are uh, close to me, are indeed quite, well, high geometry bungalows uh, of 2000 vertices each. But the ones behind, so these, 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 all the way there are actually low poly bungalow uh, of only 500 vertices each. And I only display 20 of them uh, at a time because, you know, that's enough. I only need to display 20 of them. It, it looks like there are a shitload of bungalow all the way to the horizon. Um, that's what matters, basically. So let me move to show you a bit how things work. So I'm right now there. So I move one, two, three, four sets of bungalows. And again, the bungalows immediately around me, the six of them are complex geometry bungalows of 2000 vertices each. But the 20 in front of me are, again, they've, they've moved. Uh, they're again low poly bungalows. And the bungalows behind me, uh, the ones a bit far away, have been replaced by low poly bungalows, 500 vertices each uh, bungalows. So that's the way things work. I could, uh, as a user, just uh, work infinitely in front of me, check each bungalow, um, each user. So, you know, that's uh, Brad Pitt. I'm not interested. Ah, oh, Brad Pitt again. I'm not interested. So who's there? Oh, that's a different Brad Pitt. Oh, again, a different Brad Pitt. So keep moving like that, you know, infinitely. And again, only the six bungalows immediately around me will be high poly. And then in front of me, I would have maximum of 20 low poly bungalows uh, and in my back, far away, again, a maximum of 20 low poly bungalows. So when you add all the vertices from all those bungalows, uh, I'm way below my uh, 50,000 vertices threshold. So it works, the performance is good. If you look again, I'm now at 1,200 uh, frames per second, quite consistently. So the performance is extremely good. Also, remember what I told you about uh, textures, my second rule? Well, there, the bungalows immediately around me, like uh, this one, for instance, or that one, they have two textures each, uh, but my bungalows far away, uh, like that one, for instance, or that one, uh, they have only one texture, not one texture each, one texture for the 20 of them together, that's it. So that's my one texture for 20 bungalows together. Why? Well, because it's more performance efficient and also because it looks fine. It doesn't look like uh, that bungalow over there far away. Uh, it doesn't look like it has, you know, uh, any different texture from this one or that one, for instance. So, you know, that's, that's a big uh, performance gain right there. And also, let me share with you when last trick. Uh, so let me go there. So you see my UI screen, you see this photo of Brad Pitt, you see that photo of Brad Pitt there. Uh, those UI screens are actually quite performance heavy. So let me show you what happens when I go there, for instance. It looks like my UI screens are still there, right? I can still make up the photo of Brad Pitt uh, right there on the other photo right there, right? Well, actually, what I do is that when I reach each bungalow, I bake the photo of Brad Pitt into the bungalow texture so that I don't display those textures anymore. I only display my two bungalow texture with uh, the photo of Brad Pitt baked into it, if that makes sense. So that's a small trick, but uh, you know, uh, 
it's um, in the end I show one less texture and it looks like my UI screen is still there and when I walk right, right uh, back to it I'm back to uh, to my no normal UI screen which is uh, interactable so I can load uh, I can load the info I can load his uh, his photos uh, and so on and, and so forth I go back away up and again it's not interactable anymore it's baked into the the bungalow texture there we are i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please uh, give it a thumb up and subscribe to our channel uh, and also don't forget to check out our other videos uh, for instance if you haven't seen it uh, you can check out the video i did last time where i have my first ever vr date with my wife it's it was a pretty damn cool experience so uh, a video worth watching so that's it. Bye guys and see you next week.